Hey guys, Silver O'Neill of GNA Reviews here with an event guide for the upcoming XL Zero crossover event for Fate Grand Order NA. Just like with all my other guides, this will be a super in-depth guide covering everything from which servants are going to be in the gacha, all the way to the most in-depth strategies on how to farm the event currency and complete the missions. And as with all my guides, there will be timestamps linked in the description box below, so you can just jump to whatever part of the video you need the most. Unlike with most events, this event is very heavy on story, in fact it's kind of like a mini story chapter, and so to respect the people who do not want to be spoiled for the event and experience it for themselves, whenever I'm going to cover spoiler territory, I will make sure to announce it so that you can skip over that section. It won't make up a huge part of this video, but just be warned that there will be some spoilers in this video, and I'll be announcing when those spoilers will be so that you can skip over it. Alright, without further ado, let's get right into it by talking about the upcoming servants. We're getting a ton of new servants with this event. In total, we're going to get six new servants. Four of them will be available to roll in the new banner. One of them is a free servant we're getting for completing the story, and one of them is actually a secret servant. Uh, we'll get into more detail on that later, but let's cover the actual gacha servants first. First up, we have two new assassin servants. We have the four-star Emiya assassin. He has a max HP of 11,168 and a max attack of 8,958, as well as an arts noble phantasm. Emiya Assassin is actually quite a decent offensive caster, I'll be doing a spotlight on him coming up before the event, so make sure you stay tuned for that and I will link it in the description below once it is done. The other new assassin we're getting is Hassan of 100 Faces, it's a 3 star assassin with 9310 max health and 6686 max attack. She also has an Arch Noble Phantasm, and for those of you who do not have a powerful offensive assassin, I do recommend getting Hassan of 100 faces. She isn't spectacular, but she's definitely worth her weight. Moving on to the 5 stars in the gacha. First up, we have Zhuge Liang, aka Waver. He is a 5 star caster with 10,598 max attack and 14,259 max HP. He is not a new servant, but this is another chance to roll him. He will be on raid up for this event. And he's one of the best servants in the entire game. If you're not familiar with him, I have a spotlight linked in the description below, so please do check that out. And finally, we have Iskander. He is a 5-star rider with a max attack of 11,560 and a max HP of 13,219. Yet again, I will be doing a spotlight on him coming up later on in this week, and when I do, I'll be sure to link it in the description below. But suffice it to say, he is a decent rider if you do not have a 5-star rider. And those are all the new servants we're getting in the gacha, so let's talk about the new craft essences we're getting. For this event, we're going to be getting 5 new craft essences, 4 will be available in the gacha, and 1 will be available in the event shop. Let's cover the gacha craft essences first. First up, we have Self Geus Scroll, it is a 3 star craft essence, which increases stun rate by 12%, and increases emblem drops for equipped servant class by 1. If you limit break it, the stun chance goes up to 15%, and increases drops by 2. This is a 3 star craft essence, so it is rollable in the friend point gacha. Other than that, there's nothing really much to say about it. It can be pretty useful on any servant who has a stun, like Hector or Waver. Next up, we have the 4-star Craft Essence, Miss Loveless, which increases Noble Phantasm Gauge by 4% per turn and Quick Card Effectiveness by 10%. It also increases Emblem Drops for the Equipped Servant Class by 2, and if you Limit Break it, it will increase Noble Phantasm Gauge by 5%, increase Quick Card Effectiveness by 12%, and Emblem Drops by 3%. This is a really good craft essence for any quick servant, it really helps them power up their Noble Phantasm a lot quicker, while giving them a nice little boost as well. Perfectly viable on pretty much any quick servant, but especially servants like Okita and Skahawk. Next up, we have a 5-star craft essence pre-awakening. This craft essence increases defense by 8%, increases Arts Buster and Quick Card effectiveness by 8% as well. It also increases Emblem Drops for the equipped servant class by 3 during the event, and if you limit break it, it will increase defense, arts card effectiveness, buster card effectiveness, and quick card effectiveness all by 10%, and increase drops by 4. This is a pretty decent all-round craft essence, it increases pretty much all the things you care about on a servant, and can make a great craft essence for servants that have a mismatched deck, somebody like Emiya or David, since it'll power up all their cards. And finally, the last gacha craft essence is Volume High Dragon, it's a 5-star craft essence, that grants invulnerability 3 times, and increases overall damage by 200. It also increases emblem drops by 3 for the event, 
If you limit break it, it'll increase the damage bonus by 300 and the drop rate by 4. Now this is possibly the best craft essence in the event. It's a very strong defensive craft essence. A lot of people have been asking what craft essence works defensively for Jolter or Kualter and the answer is this. And finally looking at the event shop craft essence, we have Final Destination it is a 5 star craft essence which grants 3 crit stars per turn and increases Noble Phantasm gauge by 30% at the start of the battle. It also increases emblem drops for all classes by 2. If you limit break it, it will grant 4 crit stars per turn and increase your Noble Phantasm gauge by 50% at the start of the battle, as well as increase drop rates by 3. This is good for supports like Tamamo, as well as crit servants like Jolter who might need some star generating on their own. Not a bad craft essence, especially one we get for free. It's also worth noting that you can limit break this without having to rely on getting it as a drop from any of the quests. You'll be able to buy 4 copies from the event shop and you get 1 as a reward for the missions. So as long as you complete the event, you should be able to max limit break this craft essence easily. And speaking of the shop, let's take a look at the shop for the event. When it comes to the shop for this event, it's pretty huge, similar to Valentine's Day, in that there are actually 7 different types of currencies you can trade in, each corresponding to the different classes. In this case, instead of chocolates, they're going to be insignias. So there's going to be Saber insignias, Lancer insignias, Archer, Assassin, Berserker, Caster, and Rider insignias. Each one trades into the shop for a different item and each one is dropped by a different enemy. We'll go into more detail on how to farm these later on in the farming section, but let's just take a look at the shop items for each currency. For Saber insignias, you'll be able to trade them in for Saber pieces and monuments, Dragon Scales, Octuplet Crystals, Crystal Fragments, and Assassin Mass, as well as QP. I do want to mention one thing, the item shop is going to have some strange items that you've never really seen before, those being the Sea Monster Tentacles, the Crystal Fragments, the Assassin Mass, and the Chalices. These are unique items to the event, they're not really used outside of the event. All they do is unlock new missions and new areas for farming, which we'll get into in the farming section again and the main story section, but just don't let them throw you off, they're just used for the story and only in this event. Now moving on to the Archer Insignia, you'll be able to trade those in for Archer Pieces and Monuments. Spirit Roots, Forbidden Pages, Sea Monster Tentacles, and Chalices, as well as QP. You'll be able to trade in Lancer Insignias for Lancer Pieces and Monuments, Bicorn Horns, Eternal Gears, Crystal Fragments, QP, and Sea Monster Tentacles. The Rider Insignias will trade in for one copy of the Event Craft Essence, Final Destination, as well as Rider Pieces and Monuments, 4 star and 3 star experience cards, Chalices, Assassin Mask, and QP. The Caster Insignias will trade in for another copy of Final Destination, Caster Pieces and Monuments, Mana Prisms, Sea Monster Tentacles, Crystal Fragments, and QP. Assassin Insignias will trade in for yet another copy of Final Destination, Assassin Monuments and Pieces, Attack and HP Foes, Assassin Mask, Chalices, and QP. And finally, the Berserker Insignias will trade in for your last copy of Final Destination, as well as a 3 star Craft Essence EXP card, Berserker Pieces and Monuments, Crystal Fragments, Sea Monster Tentacles, Assassin Mass, and Chalices, as well as QP. I also want to mention, as opposed to the usual events, you're going to want to actually farm QP for this event. The rate at which the QP exchanges for the shop currencies is tremendously good, it should be about 1 insignia for 10,000 QP, and given that you're going to be farming all types of insignias, and you're going to have plenty of extra through the course of the event, this is an easy way to make millions and millions and millions of extra QP. So this is possibly the best event for farming QP outside of the lottery boxes. So now let's talk a bit about how the mission system works for this event. The mission system for this event is identical to the one in the Cardinal Kyokai event. There's going to be 100 different missions, beating each one will give you a different kind of reward, ranging from everything from QP, to summoning tickets, to quartz, to apples, and some of them will even reward you with those sea monster tentacles and assassin mask and chalices as I mentioned before. I'm not going to go in detail into each individual mission. But I will say that the missions are all pretty self-explanatory, they range from beating specific 
story chapters to completing certain free quests a number of times and most of the missions are just simple things like defeat 30 of a certain type of enemy very very similar to the Karno Kyokai structure in fact it's identical and the mission structure is going to be the primary way of unlocking new areas so if you're ever wondering where to go next chances are you have to beat a certain mission to unlock a new story chapter or a new area to farm and even if you can't farm the entire shop try to make sure to at least complete all 100 missions because the prizes are well worth it and now let's talk about the main story for the event the main story for this event is very different from any of the other events we've gotten so far it's almost like a mini singularity in and of itself in fact it's 18 chapters and going along those lines you can actually expect it to be decently challenging as well it's not going to be overly difficult but the main story missions aka chapters 1 through 18 are about as difficult in scale as the okeanos missions so if you're able to complete okeanos with your team you should be in a good position to at least clear the 18 story chapters in this event there are going to be extra bonus missions after those 18 however and those will be much more challenging around maybe america's level of difficulty so overall, if you have a team strong enough to beat the America Singularity, you should be in a good position to just clean up this whole event. Otherwise, you're going to want a team that's at least good enough to face off in Okeanos to make sure you can clear at least the story chapters. And right now, this is a graph displaying how to unlock all the different story missions, so you might want to reference this graph a lot. For example, you'll see in Chapter 1, the starting quest is automatically unlocked. But if you want to unlock Chapter 2, you have to clear the free quest Bridge Rank D. To unlock Story Mission 3, you have to collect 50 Rider Emblems. To unlock Story Mission number 4, you have to defeat 30 Spellbook enemies, etc, etc. All the way until Story Mission number 18. And then that extra mission at the end. Again, there are going to be bonus Story Missions after this one, but that's a bit of spoiler territory. I also want to mention that beating the 18 story missions will gain you access to the event welfare servant, the free servant you get for the event. So I do recommend at a bare minimum, everyone at least clears the story, clear those 18 chapters to get the free servant. And if you want more copies of that servant and you need to ascend that servant, well, let's get into that right now. So if you don't want to be spoiled on who the welfare servant is or what the bonus missions are, then skip ahead to the next section, the free quest farming. But for everyone else, let's get into a little bit of spoiler territory. So we're going to get four different bonus areas. As you can see, we're going to fight fire, wind, water, and earth, Iris Veal. These are bonus missions that are going to be a lot harder than the main story missions. You can expect enemies to have somewhere around 200,000 HP. Again, very similar to the America Singularity. Essentially, you just need to complete the first 18 story chapters, then the extra mission, and then finish collecting all 20 of each event item. So all 20 of assassination masks, all 20 sea demon tentacles, all 20 crystal fragments, and all 20 chalices. As for what reward you're going to get, clearing each bonus mission is going to reward you with an extra copy of Iris Veal, who is the event welfare servant. So you'll get one copy for clearing the story mission at chapter 18. And then you'll get another copy for beating each of the four bonus missions. So if you want to Noble Phantasm 5 her, which I heavily recommend you do because she's one of the better welfare servants, you're going to want to clear all the bonus missions. In addition, you're going to want to ascend her, so make sure you clear the EX version of all the free quests. Just to summarize, you want to clear Chapter 18 for the first copy of Irie, and then clear all the EX missions in the free quest to get all the ascension items. Then clear all four bonus missions for each subsequent copy for Noble Phantasm 5. So now let's move on to explaining how to farm the free quest. So when it comes to farming the free quest, I'm gonna break this up into three sections. First, we're gonna talk about how to farm for the insignia drops so you can clear the event shop. Then I'll talk about the ascension mats and where to farm those. And finally, we'll finish up with a brief guide on how to generally clear the event missions. So first up with the insignia drops, as always, I recommend rushing the event craft essence from the shop. You're going to want to make sure you get 300 rider, caster, assassin, and berserker insignias so that you can buy all four copies of the event craft essence from the shop. You do not want to limit break this craft essence just yet. In fact, don't limit break it until the end of the event because you're going to need all five copies. It just makes farming a lot easier. 
And speaking of craft essences, the gacha craft essences are going to be very helpful here as well. When it comes to which craft essence to give to which servant, keep in mind that whichever servant you give a craft essence to, it's going to boost the insignia drops for that class. So for example, if you give Arturia the 4 star craft essence, it's going to increase the drop of all saber insignias by 2. The 5 star craft essences will increase drops by 3, 4 star will increase by 2, and the 3 star craft essence will increase the drops by 1. The event shop craft essence is going to increase the drop of all classes by 2, so it doesn't matter which servant you put that on, it's just going to increase all the drops by 2. As for the extra classes and how they play in, if you equipped one of these gacha craft essences to a ruler class servant, so a Makusa or Jean, it will increase the drop rate for all knight class servants by the appropriate amount, so it'll increase the drop rate for saber, lancer, and archer insignias. If you equipped it to an Avenger class servant, it will increase the drop rate for cavalry class insignias, aka Rider, Caster, Assassin, and Berserker. And if you equipped one of these gacha craft essences to Shielder, you'll increase the drop rate for all the classes. So it's not a bad idea if you get one of the 5 star craft essences from the gacha to just give it to Mosh and stick her in the back of your party. Now on top of the craft essences, we also get increased drop rates from very specific servants. Basically all the Fate Zero servants are going to give you bonus drops. So the bonus servants are Arturia, Gael de Rey, Gil, Kogil, Nirmud, both versions of Iskander, Zhugal Young, Caster Giles, Assassin Emiya, both versions of Hassan, Lancelot, and Angra Manu. And all of these servants will increase drop rate of the corresponding insignia by three. They increase the drop rate of whatever class they have an advantage over. So for example, if you have Arturia in your party, she's going to increase the drop rate of Lancer insignias by three. If you have Gil in your party, he's going to increase the drop rate of Saber insignias by three. If you have Iskander in your party, he's going to increase the drop rate of Caster insignias by three. And I should also note that you do not have to have them in the front of your party, so it doesn't matter if they're level 1 or whatever. You can actually just have a level 1 Saber, stick her in the back of your party, never use her, and you'll still get the plus 3 to the Lancer drops. This also stacks with the Craft Essences, so if you have a 5 star event Craft Essence on Saber for example, then your Saber is going to increase Saber drop rate by 3 and Lancer drop rate by 3. Now let's talk about the free quests themselves. So just like with the story missions, the free quests unlock after you beat certain missions, story quests, or after you obtain a certain amount of the special item like the assassin mask or the demon tentacles. This is a list of how to unlock each free quest. As you can see, there's a rank D, a rank C, a rank B, a rank A, and a rank EX of each different free quest. But for now, do take note about how to unlock each different free quest. So when it comes to where you want to farm for each of the insignias, these are the best locations for farming. For farming the Saber Insignias, for example, you're going to want to farm the Rank A quest in the New Urban area. For Archers, you're going to want to farm the Reservoir Rank B quest. For Lancer Insignias, you're going to want to farm Einsburn Castle Rank A. For Riders, you're going to want to farm the Old Samurai Residence Rank A. For Casters, you're going to want to farm the School Rank A. For Assassins, you can farm Residential District Rank A or EX. And for Berserker tokens, you're going to want to farm the Tosaka Residence Rank A. The unlock requirements for each of these areas is also in this chart. So for example, if you want to unlock a new Urban Rank A, you're going to need 13 C Demon Tentacles and you're going to have to complete Chapter 4 in the story. Obviously these insignias will drop in all the other free quests as well, so you're going to get a ton of them. But these are the actual best places to farm them, because these are the areas where they're going to be the most abundant. Now let's talk about Ascension Material farming. So when it comes to farming for Ascension Materials, I'm going to point out the most notable places worth farming. In the residential area, you can get the Red Bloodstone tier by killing the Gazer enemies. In the Fuyuki Bridge area, you'll be able to get the Forbidden Pages if you kill the Spellbook enemies and the Grimoire enemies. The Bladed Wingworms in the Harbor area will drop Phoenix Plumes and the Bicorn in the Harbor area will drop a Bicorn Horn. You'll be able to farm the Ancient Gears in the Shinto area via Automatas and Killing Dolls as well as the Old Gear enemy. Fuyuki Church will have a Soul Eater you can farm for the Black Tar Pot. The Soars are going to have the Sea Demons and the Sea Demons will drop 
snake jewels. I know a lot of people want snake jewels, so that's going to be your best bet for farming those. And there's also a demon who will drop a heart. The martial arts dojo will have a chimera that drops a chaos talent. The Tosaka residents will have golems that drop octuplet crystals. The academy has a spriggan that drops the spirit root. The Einsburn castle has homunculuses that drop the homunculi babies. And finally, the large cavern will have a dragon that drops reverse dragon scales. So if any of those sound remotely interesting to you, make sure you farm those areas. And now let's move on to the last part of the farming guide, which is the mission farming. So when it comes to completing the missions for this event, most of them are self-explanatory. Like I said, a lot of them have to do with completing certain story chapters, but most of them have to do with killing certain enemies and farming a certain amount of insignias. So I'm going to tell you the best places to farm insignias and the best places to find the enemies that you need to farm. So here's the same chart from earlier in the video. Again, this is going to be the best spot to farm the different tokens. If you're farming Lancer insignias, the best spot to farm them is the Einsburn Castle rank A. For casters, it's the Academy rank A. For Berserkers, it's the Tosaka Residence rank A. And on the rightmost side is the criteria for unlocking those free quests. So this is going to be the spots that you're going to want to farm for the insignias. When it comes to farming specific enemies, the best place to farm the Hassan enemies is in the Residential District, specifically Residential District EX. You can specifically find Zaid the Base in Residential District Rank C, Makuru the Quick in Residential District Rank A, and Strange Arm Gozaru in Residential District Rank A as well. Generally speaking, Residential District Rank EX is the best spot for farming Hassan enemies. Although to unlock it, you would have to have completed Act 18, aka completed the story. For the bladed insect enemies, your best bet is to go to the Old Samurai Residence, rank A. That's going to have the most bladed insect enemies. You'll have to have completed Act 11 of the story and have 16 chalices in order to gain access to that location. And when it comes to farming spell books, your best bet is the Academy Free Quest, rank A. Specifically for Grimoire enemies, they're going to be found in the EX Academy quest. Moving on to the Automata enemies, you can find Automata enemies in the New Urban Rank A area. Killing Doll enemies can be found in New Urban Rank EX. And the special Old Gear enemy can be found in the New Urban Rank EX along with the Killing Doll or the Fuyuki Church Rank EX. Sea Demon enemies can be found in the Reservoir or the Soar, depending on which translation they go with. They're going to be found in ranks B, A, and EX, and the Gluttonous Demon in particular is only going to be found in Reservoir Rank EX, which you need to complete Act 18 for. Golem enemies can be found in the Tosaka Residence Rank A. Crystal Golems can be found in the EX version of Tosaka Residence. Homunculi can be found in Einsburn Castle Rank A. Proto Homunculi can be found in the EX version of Einsburn Castle. And finally, for Shadow Servants, they're going to be found in pretty much the EX rank of all the quests. You're always going to face a Shadow Servant in the EX version of these free quests. Sometimes you'll face them in a rank A quest, but really you can take your pick here. And that should cover everything you need to know in terms of completing the missions. Again, the ones that aren't related to killing specific enemies or gathering a certain amount of insignias are all just ones related to max ascending the welfare servant or completing the story missions etc stuff you're going to do in the natural course of playing anyway all right guys that about wraps up everything i have to say about this event prepare for a pretty long event that's very story heavy with a decent difficulty curve again if you're strong enough to clear Okeanos, I think you're more than strong enough to beat the 18 story missions. And if you're able to clear the America Singularity, you should be more than strong enough to beat all the bonus missions and farm this event pretty efficiently. As soon as you unlock those free quests, try your best to get the event craft essence as soon as possible from the shop. And then after that, focus on completing as many missions as possible. And if all you want from this event is the Welfare Servant, then make sure you at least clear the story. And you're going to want to at least clear the EX version of all the uh, free quests to get the Ascension items you need for her. One thing I do want to make a special note about is that there is no rerun of this event yet. Uh, at least we haven't gotten it in JP. Who knows, by the time this video is up, maybe there will be an announcement that we're getting a rerun of this event. I don't know, but in any case, this is going to be your one time to get this event done. If you skip out on this event, unfortunately, you're going to skip out on 
getting that welfare service who's extremely good for at least another two years. So best of luck to everyone participating in this event, and I highly stress you complete this event. And if this video helped you, please do consider leaving a like. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I'll be putting out those spotlights for the new servants later on this week. And if you haven't already, follow us on Twitter and Discord and click that little bell icon on the video so you can be notified when those spotlights go up. Until the next time, guys, this is Silver Oni signing out. Later.